This is the second video for the carboxylic acids and derivatives playlist for A-level chemistry. If you want to check out the other videos in the playlist, I'll put the link to it at the top of the screen now. I hope you like the video and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I'd love you to do so. But as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So we've got to give the systematic name for ester A. So you can see I've kind of circled the two parts of the ester. So we've got this part here, that's an ethyl group. And this red part here, this is a 3-bromopropanoate group. So obviously propanoid because it's got three carbons. Carbon 1 is the functional group carbon. So that bro means on carbon 3. So that means its systematic name is ethyl 3 bromo propanoate. Moving on to the next part. So we're reacting the ester with aqueous acid and aqueous alkali. The red bond there just signifies the, the bond that's going to break in these hydrolysis reactions, which is an answer to the next question. So when we hydrolyze an ester by acid hydrolysis, this part becomes an alcohol and this part here becomes a carboxylic acid. So the products of that reaction are going to be those there. And then moving on to the alkaline hydrolysis, it's the same bond that breaks. We're going to get an alcohol again, so we're just going to make that again. But this time we're going to get a carboxylate ion here. We've got to be really careful because the hydroxide can also substitute with that bromine. So there's your products on the screen now and well done if you remembered about that. And like I said a minute ago, the type of reaction that's taking place is hydrolysis. Moving on to part B, so you can see I've already populated the type of proton environment we've got. So number one is H to C to Br, H to C to C double bond O, H to C to single bond O, and H to C to R. So all we need to do is go to the data sheet and find out the range for these chemical shifts. So just the bar on the data sheet tells us that. And then we'll talk about the splitting patterns in a second. So there's the shift ranges there. So let's talk about splitting patterns now. So environment one, these two protons here are adjacent to another two in a different environment. So they're going to get split. And we use the N plus one rule, of course. And so if we have got two adjacent protons, you're going to see three lines, so we're going to see a triplet for one. Environment two, well, they're adjacent to environment one, which is another CH2 group, so you're going to get another triplet there. Environment three is another CH2 group, but it's next to a CH3 group, so we're going to get four lines, so we get a quartet. And finally, environment four, next to two, so we're going to see another triplet. Moving on to part C, so we're told compound B is a structural isomer of ester A. It reacts with aqueous sodium carbonate, so that means it's got a carboxylic acid group in it, and it has four peaks in its carbon-13 NMR spectrum, so there must be four carbon environments. So in terms of structure, you could have any one of these three I've got on the screen now. So just to check, we've got the four environments. One two three four one two three four one two three four moving on to part d so i've just drawn up the structure for four hydroxybenzoic acid just to quickly explain how this polymer is going to form so we're going to take the h off the oh group and we're going to take the oh off the carboxylic acid group which means we can then add multiple copies of these um, to each other. And we're told we're going to form a polyester that contains 200 of these. Now the thing to bear in mind is, at the very end and start of the uh, polymer, you'll still have that on, and you'll still have that on. So in terms of the MR of the polyester, the first thing we need to do is work out the MR of the monomer. So that's 138. We've got 200 of those, so that gives us 27,600. But now we need to subtract 199 times 18 for those 199 water molecules that we're going to lose 
when these 200 monomers join together. But remember, we don't lose the H and the OH at the very start and the very end of the polymer chain. So that means the MR of the polymer is 24018 grams per mole. So very well done if you got that completely right. Moving on to part E, so the synthesis of the ester in two stages. Um, starting from this um, aldehyde to methyl propanol. So you can see I've written up there. This has obviously got no detail in it. It's just the two steps we're going to need to do. So the first thing we need to do is oxidize the aldehyde to the carboxylic acid. And then once we've made that carboxylic acid, we can react it with an alcohol to generate the ester. So there's the equation for the first step. So we're oxidizing the aldehyde with the oxidizing agent which is acidified potassium dichromate. So I'm getting the reagents there. Uh, the conditions, we need to reflux it, or you could just reference heat there, but reflux is fine. And there's the um, formula, the structure for the carboxylic acid that would form. And then step two, where we react the carboxylic acid with an alcohol. So to get the methyl ester, which is what it is, we react it with methanol. Again, you need to heat it, so I'm just using reflux but you need to have um, a concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst present. And obviously that's making the ester and it also generates a water molecule. Moving on to the calculation. So we need to make 12.75 grams of ester C. So we divide that by the MR to get the moles. And then to get the moles of the aldehyde we're gonna need, we're gonna divide by the percentage yield, which was 40%. So I'm just dividing by 0.4. So that scales the moles up to 0.3125. And then all we need to do now is multiply this by the MR of the aldehyde to get the mass, which comes out at 22.5 grams. And finally, these possible structures for the species that have caused the fragment peaks at Y and Z. So you'll notice I've worked out the M over Z values. So we've got 43 for Y and 71 for Z. So basically, all we've got to do is look at the structure of the ester, break one bond in the full molecule, and try and make the 43 MR and the 71. So starting with the peak Y, 43 M over Z, this bond breaks, and this bit is detected by the mass spectrometer. That adds up to 43. So I've given the skeletal formula there and the structural formula but whatever you do, don't forget about this positive charge because you'd lose a mark if you didn't put it on. And then for peak Z at M over Z71, we need to break this bond here. So this bit will carry the positive charge and be detected. So there's the skeletal formula. There's the structural formula for the ion. And don't forget about the charge. <laughs>